Flight 229, you're clear for takeoff. Just like a flight plan, you have to know where you're going and how you will get there when you plan for retirement. Let Ryan Fleming help you chart out a course for your retirement with his intimate knowledge of financial planning and the airline industry. It's time for the Pilot's Advisor. It's another edition of the Pilot's Advisor. Walter Stroholt alongside Ryan Fleming. He's a financial advisor, also a pilot at Retire Pilots, serving you worldwide. Great financial retirement planning guidance based out of St. Louis. And that's where he's actually joining us from today, not internationally as it has been for the past couple of episodes. Ryan, I'm sure it's good to have your feet planted back in the ground firmly at home, even if it's just for a couple of days. How you been? Yeah, I like being in the home office, but unfortunately, I'm back at work, so we uh, got to work from the road, whether it's in Paris, Dubai. Uh, I think we did a couple of shows when I was in Japan. Yeah, that's right. You were in Japan, and uh, boy, it's uh, just nice to have you back stateside, at least for a couple of days here, Ryan. Uh, in fact, describe for us, before we jump into the material today, describe for us uh, what is your home recording setup? When, when you know, We know when you're on the road, it's usually probably a hotel room, but what, what you got? what's the setup at the house? Um, I have an office in my, you know, a dedicated office uh, in my house. And, um, you know, I, I actually use my, my laptop for everything. So it, whether I'm on the road or at home, I'm using my laptop. Of course, I have a lot better material set up here where, you know, I do a lot of Zoom calls. So uh, at, at my home office, I have a bunch of stuff behind me for my Zoom calls. I have lighting, I have an actual microphone and Walter gets mad at me because sometimes we do these podcasting on the road. I used to carry my microphone with me all the time, and now I've gotten a little lazy. <laughs> I don't take my microphone, so it probably doesn't, doesn't sound as good. Hey, you got to pack a light weight. So, you know, I, I know every ounce counts when you're traveling. So it's all it's all good. We need to get you like a super mini mic to take with you, perhaps. Yeah, well, you know, Walter, you know, <laughs> uh, Walter actually has a brother-in-law who's a Delta pilot. And, uh, you know, the longer you fly... It is more and more about the more you can cram in your bag and make it lighter. Yeah, yeah. He says the, uh, you know, the Kindle or the tablet or whatever the case is comes in handy because you can carry a lot of uh, entertainment, whether it be books, movies, or whatever, in a very small package. So that's very helpful from the uh, transportation and weight standpoint. I don't know if I could convince him to to take a microphone with him if we ever had him on the show or something like that. So well, and it's it's uh, tough because sadly on my last trip. Somehow I didn't have my adapter. So I was in Paris and I didn't have my adapter to be able to plug in all my devices. Oh, I mean, not a big deal. You just go down to the front desk and borrow one. But it's all the little tiny details you don't think about. Or like we have currency in like 12 different countries. So you carry around like a little change purse with all different kinds of money. Yeah, it's a little it's the little things sometimes that pile up that you got to keep track of. And that that can wear you down mentally a little bit, I imagine. Well. Very good. Well, glad that you are getting some rest, and let's dive into our conversation today, Ryan. We're talking about reasons you should get life insurance. Now, that doesn't mean you must or go do it right now, but obviously, I mean, life insurance, okay, it could be a pretty boring topic, Ryan. We're going to try and make it a little bit more interesting on today's show. And a lot of what you're you know, going to research or hear about is, you know, they're going to kind of, I don't know, try to convince you to not get various types of life insurance. I think if you try and, you know, life insurance gets this negative sort of um, appeal in the media. I mean, we all know the Groundhog Day stereotype of Ned, the annoying insurance salesman, right, Ryan? That sort of just insurance always gets a bad rap, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. And that's why I, I haven't kept my insurance license active. But if you're a FedEx pilot, actually, if you're any pilot, this is going to be a good topic to discuss because uh, like survivor benefit type issues, we, we're going to discuss today on today's show. And I think uh, some of our listeners will learn something. Yeah. So our goal is going to be to analyze not the reasons why you shouldn't get life insurance, because there's plenty of information about that out there, but maybe why you should at least consider it. Uh, just because maybe you don't have kids around the house anymore doesn't mean that there aren't uses for life insurance going forward. So, And also keep this in mind, the context of this is for folks who are maybe approaching or getting into retirement. Um, what I will do is, you know, I'm quite opinionated. What I would say is the reason why insurance gets a bad rap and the reason why some insurance pusher trying to sell you a product has everything to do with whole life and universal life where they're trying to mix investing and insurance versus a straight term policy, which is the way I think most of our listeners should go. 
Mm, that's a great point. All right, well, let's uh, get into that as we go through these different reasons. And feel free to disagree with any of these reasons, Ryan. We've got seven of them to cover on the program today, so we'll walk through each one I, of them. I disagree. Okay, you disagree already. Boom. I disagree. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the first reason is income replacement. Income replacement. Why might that be a reason somebody should get life insurance in retirement? What use does it have there? Well, I think everybody understands the idea you know, of using life insurance to replace somebody's income if they die unexpectedly. But I think many people fail to see the importance of replacing the income of a retired person. So specifically, and this is, comes right down to talking about a FedEx pilot. So if that person dies, they lose the pension. And a big issue that I talk with many of my clients is the survivor benefit at FedEx. The, to buy into the 50% survivor benefit to where your spouse would get half of your pension is actually ridiculously expensive. And it makes a lot more sense to buy a term life insurance policy so that if you pass you know, unexpectedly in your younger years, then your spouse would get tax-free income later on. And uh, we could talk about this specifically if there's any FedEx pilots out there that would like to discuss this with me. Please reach out, but they will take up to $1,800 a month from your pension checked for the 50% survivor benefit. And the math doesn't work out. So definitely uh, look me up and discuss that. That makes a lot of sense. So you're saying, all right, I can I can get less on the pension over time for the benefit of half of it surviving to my spouse, or I can take only a portion of that difference, of that decrease, buy a life insurance policy and accomplish even greater you know, potential money returns or financial returns at a much cheaper price. That's where that functionality comes in. Absolutely. And tax-free. And, and the way to conceptually think about it is how much life insurance do you think you can buy for $1,800 premium a month? And the answer is a ton. I would imagine a lot, even if you're in, in that retirement age bracket, right? Yeah. Even in your 60s. And so when you start looking at what you have to give up to have that 50% pension survivor benefit, it's very, very expensive. So I've done a lot of math for many of my current clients and showed them the benefit, did, you know, did the calculations which I have on hand, and I'd be more than happy to, to share that with any, uh, any FedEx pilots that are listening out there. If you want to get in touch, you can call or text Ryan right now at 843-475-3038, 843-475-3038. If you want to little, learn a little bit more, see some more examples about income replacement and how life insurance can be a benefit in those kinds of situations, especially with that pension dynamic. You can also email him, ryan at pilotsadvisor.com, ryan at pilotsadvisor.com. All right, something else that might be a reason to get life insurance, estate liquidity. What's at play here, Ryan? Well, and I'm actually dealing with this with one of my clients right now. So you have an estate and you end up, you know, you have it all set up. You have a trust, maybe you have the beneficiaries for your estate. But when you actually pass, there's a lot of problems that arise that most people don't realize. So if you're a beneficiary of state, especially one that largely consists of real estate, you have a lot more taxes that you're responsible for than you than you would even consider. And, and I think most people before they pass, if they don't have their estate in total order, they don't realize the burden that they're actually putting on the beneficiaries and their children. Life insurance proceeds can help cover a lot of those bills, or even if it's covering, you know, funeral arrangements and stuff. Uh, a smaller, you know, death benefit life insurance policy takes a lot of the pressure off of everyone in a very, I'd say, stressful time. Thanks for listening to The Pilot's Advisor. Hey, if you're ready to have clarity and thrive in your retirement, you're in the right place. And I've got another resource for you to check out. Go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. And look right there on the homepage, you'll be able to click Get My Free Toolkit. What this is going to do is help you get for free Ryan's Retirement Toolkit. This is going to include his two books, The Pilot's Advisor and Pilot's Retire Early, revealing the nine critical decisions when retiring and the seven lessons to save your retirement. If you're ready to retire early or engage the autopilot on your 401k, these are the books for you, and this is the toolkit for you. Not only does it include the books, but lots of other goodies packed into this free toolkit that will be sent to you ASAP. All you have to do is go to retirepilots.com. That's retirepilots.com. Click on the Send My Toolkit button, and we'll get it in the mail to you shortly. It's a great starting place for any pilot to begin their retirement journey. Go to retirepilots.com. 
Uh, what about locking in a low premium? Um, th- that a good reason to get life insurance? Well, your age and your health are a huge factor when you're getting life insurance and how much it's going to cost you. So if you're looking at trying to insure your family in retirement, getting it before you turn 60 is a big deal. You know, the different the difference between 59 and 60 is going to have a drastic effect on your premium. Um, I just turned 43 and realized I'm not getting any healthier. You know, you're fighting that the age battle. Um, I actually took out a life insurance policy here recently um, to protect my family simply because I knew that it's only going to get more and more expensive as time goes on. So people actually ladder um, term policies. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but the bottom line is premiums are only going to increase as you get older. Uh, if you get sick, they're going to go way up and you might not even be insurable and you not, might not be able to get life insurance at all. And so sometimes it makes sense to go ahead and get that policy put in place while the premiums are more affordable. Even if you're unsure whether you need it or not, you can cancel it at any time, but something happens to you, you get that one EKG that looks bad and you got a little problem with the ticker, well, guess what? That's going to follow you around and you may not be able to protect your family after that. So if these are concerns or something that you're thinking about or that might be keeping you up at night, absolutely reach out to us and we can help you out. Yeah, again, it's always great to have these conversations about uh, these smaller topics, these more individual topics, life insurance. Sometimes we talk about, you know, maybe it's you've just heard something about annuities and wonder if that's right for you or, you know, putting your money in the stock market, how much risk. All of these little layers and pieces come together in an overall financial plan. And that's what Ryan does uh, with pilots and uh, retirees all over the world, helping them get ready for retirement by putting these little pieces into that bigger picture. Again, call or text Ryan at 843-475-3038 or go to retirepilots.com. We'll also put contact info in the description of today's show as well. You can also use life insurance to transfer family wealth. Is that a good reason to perhaps consider life insurance, Ryan? This is actually one that I think is pretty amazing that I've seen some people do as a strategy. And of course, when you buy life insurance, you get that benefit as a tax-free you know, payout. And so one of the new strategies that I've been seeing, and not only not only from very wealthy families, but very strategic families, is rather than a younger person starting to pay into or save in their 401k, they're actually paying into a life insurance policy on their parents. And mm. I know it sounds crazy, but the power of insurance is being able to leverage your money. So rather than, let's say, you know, saving, I don't know, $20,000 a year in your 401k, You use that money to leverage into a life insurance policy. Now think about how much of a life insurance policy you would get for $20,000 a year premium. Once again, crazy. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. And oh, by the way, Uncle Sam can't take any of it tax-free. So leaving more money to your beneficiaries in a very tax-efficient way, in a way that we can be confident will always be tax-efficient, no matter what changes with the state tax laws is having a, a, a policy of transferring wealth in that in that manner, which I thought was a very strategic and insightful way. And I'm not I'm not saying or supporting that that's what you should do. I I still think you should uh, max out your 401k, but that might be something else to consider and how you can uh, invest your money. Great example and uh, very reminiscent of the one that we were talking about with you know income replacement. Uh, and the pension example, just that big disparity and what you can accomplish with that, with those leftover dollars and uh, what kind of policies you can buy there and how they might be useful to you. Uh, what about from a business standpoint, Ryan? Is life insurance something to consider for like a business succession plan? I'm not real knowledgeable in this, but there's definitely cases, especially uh, privately owned business, where if you own that small business, the succession plan may include a buy-sell agreement. And within that, that requires someone to purchase a significant amount of the business or share of stock or some other portion of that business so that your family can get a payout. And life insurance is a great way to provide those funds to allow that buy-sell agreement to work for both parties. You've mentioned Uncle Sam a couple of times. So let's make that point number six, tax-free income from life insurance. Yeah. um, Any life insurance policy is going to be a tax-free payout, which is huge. For high income earners that can't contribute to a Roth IRA, uh, cash value policy can provide a way to save and invest for tax free income down the road. And this is where you start getting into some of those universal life, variable life. It's another way to have a way to borrow 
money tax free. Um, and there's some good books out there that talk about this. Uh, the Power of Zero has a little bit of it in there, which I, I talk to my clients a lot about the Power of Zero. But if you're doing anything with your money and you're not thinking about Uncle Sam and how it's going to affect you today, tomorrow, or 20 years from now, you're wrong because you're going to have a big wake up call. Great points all the way around, Ryan. All right, one last one, and that would be as we talk about the seven ways, uh, seven reasons why you should consider life insurance. Uh, help with long-term care coverage. I know long-term care is something that everybody needs a plan for, but often people kind of stick their head in the sand when it comes to that conversation, right? Sadly, long-term care insurance is so ungodly expensive that most people decide to, to self-insure. Um, however, there's, they're, they're coming out with some hybrid plans now, and I, and I hope they continue to get better. With a policy with an accelerated death benefit, they could provide for some of the healthcare expenses and provide, you know, funds that aren't used for healthcare. So they're coming up with plans now that which is a, a difference between like a life insurance policy and a long-term care coverage policy, a kind of a hybrid. Um, and as they hopefully come up with more options, this might be more viable for individuals. Um, but sadly, what I'm seeing because of the cost of long-term care insurance, most people are choosing to to self-insure or say, hey, my spouse will take care of me. And if my spouse isn't around, hopefully my kids will step up to the plate and do whatever's needed to, to take care of me. Yeah, it's a big piece of that puzzle, again, that we're talking about with the full planning that comes into play, you know, getting that help with long-term care coverage in some way, shape, or form. It can be done many ways to kind of slice that cake, but you got to make sure that it's getting sliced, and that's what the full planning process comes down to. And that's what Ryan can help you do. He can help engage the autopilot on your 401k and make sure that your entire financial plan is working together, working in concert with all those different moving pieces to accomplish your retirement goals. If you want to get in touch with and talk about setting up a time to visit, have a conversation about your plan, what you can do to improve your financial situation moving forward and into retirement. Give them a call or shoot them a text at 843 475 3038. A fellow pilot who is also a great financial advisor helping folks out all across the world. 843-475-3038 or you can go to retirepilots.com. While you're there, pick up your free retirement toolkit which has lots of great resources and information to help pilots avoid paying more taxes than they need to in retirement and get specific financial advice for the profession. That's all at retirepilots.com plus much more information as well. Uh, Ryan, thanks so much for the guidance when it comes to talking about taxes and uh, life insurance and estate liquidity and transferring wealth. Lots of good topics covered on today's show. Before we run off for the week, it's time to get to know Ryan a little bit better. One of the ways that we like to end shows is with the Getting to Know You segment. Oh, no. It's Getting to Know You time. Ryan, I'm curious, what's your favorite family holiday tradition? I love the holidays. I think Christmas is probably my favorite holiday. Um, but the one thing about the family holidays with Thanksgiving or Christmas, it always seems like there's a little bit of drama somehow, some way. You know, somebody's upset about this or or people are arguing a little bit about where where we're going to meet up. Where When I was a child, it was funny because we, we had traditions that just didn't change. I mean, we always went to my grandparents' house. And I think what's made it more difficult over time is that people are tending to move away from their hometown and live all across the country. And it's a little bit more of a, a dynamic situation than it was when, when I was growing up or even when my parents were growing up. What do you think, Walter? Yeah, I would say um, definitely Christmas. And then whenever we get to have Christmas in Maine with my, uh, with my dad's parents, um, they are, well, they're in Maine. So we have lobster for Christmas dinner or for, for Christmas Eve dinner is, uh, that's our tradition. So that's pretty good. We'll take, I'll take that. <laughs> no, that, that sounds good. And, and I think, I think that's why I've always appreciated the 4th of July. I feel like there's less family drama going on. There's a lot of grilling out, you know, people are having cocktails or beers and outside beautiful weather. It just seems to be a lot less drama around the 4th of July. Yeah, it's a great point too. Um, summer holidays are great. Really any of the Memorial Day gatherings, Labor Day is good. July 4th is great. Uh, my birthday's in July. So, you know, all those are good reasons for gathering and doing something. And, uh, yeah, low stress because there's not the expectation of gifts and Santa and trying to make things so special for the kids. It's just, it's just an easygoing uh, slate of holidays over the summer. So 
I can see why you like that so much. I'd agree. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. We'll talk to you next time right back here on The Pilot's Advisor. Information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.